Yeah, so let's talk about that. We, we, we post a, a question on Instagram like, um, yeah, what do you want to ask the tall guy from, from Belgium? And many people actually ask like, how do you make it to such a high level at the, yeah, as a CrossFit athlete? Because for example, we did a study um, with elite CrossFit athletes and one of the things that showed up was actually what was um, determining performance at the Open, I'm talking about the Open, mm -hmm. was not VO2 max, not pure strength, it was anthropometrics, how mm -hmm. long your ties were and how long your arms were. Literally, yeah. this, this only vari uh, variables yeah. were, were important, which is interesting. So, um, do you train accordingly? For example, do you focus on your strengths because you know if, if there's running, I can win actually and really get a lot of points? Or do you also work on your weaknesses? Well, first of all, the first part of your uh, question, yes. I think it's true. I never done very good at the Open. Yes. You also see, I think I'm the athlete that finished highest in the games and lowest in the Open and quarterfinals because I would not even have qualified this year with my quarterfinal performance because now they take the top 40. Yes. I finished 44th. Really? So it always has been a struggle to... It's stressy. I, I, I yeah, see. very stressy. For me, quarterfinals were more stressy than semifinals That's than the games because, uh, yeah. You know it it's going to be... be yeah. Yeah. It will be hard and it can be done. Uh, it can be finished there already for me. Yes. You, you think... You think... CrossFit HQ should change something or do you think, for example, I mean, it's maybe a bit of a, a difficult question, I know, but do you think maybe they should just incorporate always a certain movement, like, for example, wall balls, like de facto, because otherwise it's just such a disadvantage for me, but for millions of other thousands of other people, or you think this is it, that's how it is? I'm not sure if... Uh... I think the test is very good to take the fittest athletes yes. because at the end, if you put a heavier barbell, if you put some high skills, yes. gymnastics exercises, it's the elite athletes will come uh, at the top. Yes. But um, I think there is a better way to do it. By example, in a judo to qualify yes. for the Olympics, you have to go through several competitions every year okay. at European Championships, you earn that amount of points. At the lower level competitions, you earn also points yes. with less. More of a season. Yes, more of a season. And there you will see the real fittest guys, yes. I think. Yes. Like, I think in that format, I would have qualified earlier for the games yes. because I never qualified I never finished the competition lower than I qualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. me, it was all the time a struggle to get in. Yes. Like the French throwdown, by example. Um, my third year of CrossFit, I qualified in a RIX, but dead last. And then I didn't finish a workout outside the top 10, and I yes. finished second. Because uh, it always has been like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you see a lot of athletes where it's the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. So you think that live competitions are more tailored to like overall, maybe even also taller athletes, um, just because you have more yeah, things you can work with. You don't have a, a small space mm -hmm. where you do, what, have to do, always have to do burpees and uh, snatches and so on, probably. Or... I think CrossFit does a good job because not everyone has the same space to yes. train, the environment. Yes. It's yes. also hard to judge yes. if you do something bigger than the box like running like running you you have to measure everything and the measure tools has to have to be correct and yes. calibrated so it's i think it's impossible to make a fair test with larger environments and more tools but it sucks being in taller, yeah. taller yeah. athletes yeah. Uh, yeah yeah but you can always incorporate rowing and wall balls and then you will read out a lot of smaller athletes yeah. already because one workout out of three or four workouts is, is a lot it's a lot of points so yeah true could, true uh, true that's good so your your training do you incorporate a lot of running because it's always fascinated me that in the in the games for example i i mean i think you can confirm there's always quite a lot of running yeah uh which suits you well i guess uh is it just a strength of you or do you always focus on running or it's all always has been a strength because I had a small period in my life yes. thing between my 11 and my 14 years old okay. where I did running as a sport okay and then I did average uh, between 2000 and 3000 kilometer a year 
So I think you there I build created... up a lot of volume. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But if you look to my running, it's still a lot of room for improvements. Like I never worked with a running. I worked with a running coach that did my programming and everything, yes. but not really technique-wise. Yeah, I still have room yeah, for yeah. improvement there. So I think I can still improve. But um, for a crossfitter, it's yeah, okay. yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Winning the I think the seventh event at the, at the games was a 5K run. So I'm sure it's quite okay. Um, you you feel that the um, like the improved or the the the, uh, the gain in muscle mass hampers or makes it more difficult for you to do bodyweight exercises like running, for example, because you see this quite a lot uh, in CrossFit athletes. They are so big and it's maybe difficult for them to run. Yeah, it's no... Uh, I already noticed that when I was younger because I was doing fitness at the time. I was doing judo, I was doing running. And when I got better in fitness, my running was getting worse because yes. I gained weight yes. and when I focused more on half marathon everything my strength went down yes. but then at that, at that point I didn't know anything about CrossFit yeah but uh, yeah it's always finding a balance and you cannot specialize in something if you want to do everything yes. that's yes. also yes. the essence of CrossFit yes you can yes. be good at everything but not specialize yes. in exactly something specific yeah um, that's 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 super interesting yeah yeah there's that's why i think um crossfit is so interesting also from a physiology point of view because as a researcher myself we have never really seen this we have seen concurrent training this is what's called like strength and endurance mm -hmm. like like for example rugby but the the overall goal was not to do the concurrent training yeah, yeah. it was just yeah, you have to do strength as a rugby athlete to be big and to run and to, mm -hmm. to, to block people. But even this is not the, the pure goal for yeah. CrossFit. It's the only outcome is the performance in the yeah. concurrent training. And this is, I think, very interesting. And also from a physiology point of view, um, you see that we actually just uh, are, are publishing a study that you show, shows that uh, exactly as you say, a CrossFit athletes endurance wise, maybe not you, but more typical uh, CrossFit athletes, they would be... Um, 30% less endurance wise compared to an elite cyclist, which is mm -hmm. quite a lot. So elite CrossFit compared to elite cyclist, 30% difference. Mm -hmm. Strength, it's much lower the differences, for yeah. example, between a weightlifter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pure how high you can jump or how uh, much uh, leg press you have. Yeah, it's yeah. quite, it's five to 10% less. It's less, but okay. less, less. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, You feel this is kind of accurate or um, yeah, it's uh, hard to tell because yes, I don't know the data, yes, yes. but um, as you've seen with a lot of elite CrossFit athletes, we will not reach the top, but we get really close. Yes, and yes. Because you have elite CrossFit athletes who do world championships weightlifting, yeah, yeah. but like you said, I never saw elite athletes doing a cycle cross. Doing or something. A they will be very cross. bad at it. It's no, funny, yeah. uh, compared, they will be good, but compared to an elite. And that's, that was also interesting. For, for example, we saw VO2 max of uh, 55, low 60s of really good, good games, athletes even. Mm -hmm. um, this was interesting for us. We thought it would be at least much higher, but it was yeah. best in the lab, like very controlled. So yeah. it's, uh, uh, while strength was, was, was interesting. I had uh, actually the same results, yes. Yes. average. And uh, the professor then yes. said like, it's impossible to have a high VOT max if you weigh 100 kilos, yes. because it's the weight is taken yes. into account. Yes. And there, I think there, yes. the nuances, yes. because the high VOT max guys, they are 60 yes. kilos or something. It's, I think, you yes, it's true. But... You have always accepted, for example, uh, cross country skiers. Yeah. They weigh, I don't think they weigh like you, but I think around uh, 9,500 kilos, they weigh 90 kilos, but they get to very, yeah. very high. So they're, but they have done endurance their whole life. So it's a big mm -hmm. difference, but yeah, I think the, the muscle mass uh, affects differently. <laughs>